start recording. So we're recording now. I'll put you folks full screen. Okay, um, so today, what is today? Today is the 28th of March. Uh, welcome to the PyScript Fun meeting. Um, what happens in the PyScript Fun meeting? Fun. Uh, that's why it's called the PyScript Fun meeting. So um, it's for clever hacks, fun demos, and all of that sort of stuff. And so we have two remarkable uh, presentations uh, this e uh, today for you. Um, we have Andrea and <laughs> and Chris. Uh, who would like to go first? Uh, yes. Okay, Andrea, okay. the floor is yours. Take it away, matey. All right. It's hopefully going to be quick. But um, long story short, somebody's trying to bring React uh, library to, to PyScript and uh, actually MicroPython. So I was interested and he asked yesterday about something he couldn't understand. Maybe I can show it. Um, it's actually a common thing. Maybe we should document this. When when you print a reference and that prints out JS proxy in MicroPython or something else that is still a proxy in, in Pyodide, maybe we should just document that if you see weird things, you don't understand what they are and you're using print, use window console log instead. And if you're using JS or window console log and you see fancy stuff, use print instead because that's the dual nature right of we are proxying stuff from js to python and vice versa so um but anyway the the, the demo was interesting and i clicked it and cloned it and improved it uh it's still all uh going uh, work in progress um, but what was it so basically this is um basic page really nothing interesting in this HTML. There is PyScript and there is a script PyPy and a div root, which is loading. And this is the result that is overwriting the root once the stuff is, is loaded. What is this? This is, yay, a fully React implemented component. And what's cool about this is that if you check how it's so the index is just loading the main.py is a, is a micro Python thing. The main.py is just this. You don't even see PyScript in here. And for me, that was like, kind of, wow. Um, and then you have a, a React component as a decorator. Uh, you define your app. And this is probably the, the hello world of any reactive components. So, so you define your um, your div in this case that returns hello world and then some button click and on click there is this reactivity and the reactivity used the set count if it was a signal based it would have used signal value or count value equal count value plus one and stuff like that so the cool part is that it works after my suggestions which was just about hey if you're stuck just use when when, when in doubt use window console log instead of print because that probably reveals something from the javascript world that python cannot fully understand rightly so and vice versa and at the end of the day the pyreact.py is using pyscript almost every latest feature so it's using just modules is using ffi and um and it's providing a, a very simple and tiny thing that is based entirely on uh, on uh, React and React DOM because these are two separate modules um, to use React on the web. Um, the, the the biggest issue I had was to find actually because apparently React is published not an, as an ECMAScript module, so I had to find the right CDN that would deliver me exactly what I wanted without errors and anything else. Um, in this case, cut it to esm.sh works. So that's pretty much it. So this is a button that is reacting whenever I click, is setting the counter plus one, and you can keep doing this. It's not refreshing the page and nothing is just, everything is really, really reactish, but also Pythonic. So that's, that's why I loved it. Um, and then I thought, okay, how about I use um, Pyodite? And then 
I run into the usual error that I don't really like uh, at the borrowed proxy and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, okay, why do I want PyDad? Because maybe uh, we want also uh, more things in the in the top. So we want packages, we want to do more React, more stuff that could actually uh, merge together with the reactivity that React provides. So once I comment out that, um, it actually works in PyDA too. And um, the only thing I call them, maybe I should run it. Maybe it's not working. Is it not working? Oh, yes, it's working. It just takes a little while, a little tad more <laughs> to bootstrap. Um, the only thing I, wa I was thinking is about, okay, React is, as a library, is actually not so tiny and uh, also I that can block on the main thread. So how about I try worker? And unfortunately, this is the, not the happy ending everyone was hoping for because with the worker, we can lazy bootstrap modules and lazy uh, and uh, not blocking bootstrap pyodide. Um, with the worker, it doesn't work. Uh, it's, it's useless. I, exactly. It doesn't work. But the reason it doesn't work is that React is using symbol, which is a primitive in JavaScript cannot survive cross real environments. So the React that is that is used in the worker doesn't understand the React that is used on the main thread because it has to use symbol and symbol don't work there. A React needs the main thread to work because the render the React DOM is fully based on document and all the kind of DOM stuff. And so yeah, not 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 the best ending of the story. But the cool thing is that when we use MicroPython, probably we don't care much about workers. Um, is, on, is also, you see in here, in the editor, it takes a little while, but if you try it online, um, actually the moment, the moment you land on the page is already there. So I'm refreshing, 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 and, uh, and you can see it's, it's, it's just there. It's, it's almost instantaneous. And that's it for, for me. Can you put the link in the chat? <clears throat> Uh, you want the latest? So I've been a few versions, but uh, this should be, you can play with it, fork it, and do whatever you want. Yes, I will put it in the chat. Uh, how do I do that? I've already cloned it, Andrea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Any questions for Andrea? No, that's wicked. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. That's very, uh, So very where's cool. the view version? Say again, sorry. Where's the where's the view version? If you're gonna yeah. go down the React path, like I'm almost <laughs> gonna insist, you have to go down. No, I see, I see, I see what you mean. Well, this is was entirely it. Basically, I didn't write anything in here. It was just community thing that hey, I'm I'm trying to to make this work, and That's here really cool. are issues, and, and and I was like, let me see because it, it's probably cool if we can bring in. Hugely, um, I mean, appreciated or used in the wild uh, libraries because when, when it comes to with Python and DOM, you know, there's not much we have except all libraries that already work on the DOM, already work on the web. And so having the ability at least to just say, okay, I want to say, to, to say I want to use matplotlib with React. Can I do that? Yes. <laughs> and that, that will be my answer. And that's, that's for me, super cool. Um, and with these thin layers around, it's super easy to reason about. And it's, it's actually, it feels, I, I'm, I'm not really a, the most Pythonic person in this group, probably the least <laughs> one, but uh, it, feels, uh, it feels good. So for me, it was like, yeah, this is cool, actually. I can clean up here and there, and this is... Cool demo, and actually, I suggested Fabio also to 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 use this demo because it, it it shows the way we import modules from the web world. We use a thin layer on Python side to provide any extra utility or any indirection, any tiny, really tiny abstraction that makes user happy and also more Python user more happy because they they think, okay, I can read a lot of docs about React and I'm doing this and it works. So yeah, that's it. Ted. Ted. Yeah, uh, so my question is, uh, was this enabled on Pyodide because of the map to object support? Or is it doing any type of data pulling oh, through Ted. micro? 
through Python. Ed, you, you missed the news, and I'm going to share quickly, very quickly again. My That's screen. okay. I'm glad to miss the news. If I <laughs> no, so th this is important. Uh, am I sharing my screen? I'm not sharing my screen. Yeah, go share it. So we <clears throat> introduced the mighty <laughs> PyScript FFI. So PyScript FFI literally exports only to JS and create proxy. With 2.js, you forget about, so this is going to be in the JS world, exactly this. That's it. You, you, there's nothing else you need to worry about. Behind the scene, once the Pyodite latest literal map idea lands... Just, you can stop it, right there. <laughs> yeah, we just, yeah, we just... just stop. Once that lands, we just remove behind the scene in our own code base, we just remove the need to do the from, uh, uh, sorry, dict converter object from entries, whatever. So once that lands, we should be good and we will try that. Probably we should give it some tests because it's not exactly a one-to-one -one thing. But right now, our FFI is normalized for both MicroPython that never cared about maps and Pyodite that can translate into, into object, JavaScript object literals. Um, similarly, for create proxy, most of the time it's not needed in MicroPython, but MicroPython is smart enough to understand, hey, it was already a proxy, don't bother. And if it's not, and you really want to create a proxy, you can do that, and it still works. So that's the, that's the latest thing in, in PyScript uh, module namespace. You can from PyScript FFI import to JS, and that's since 2024 3.2 so which is the release we we, we did this week earlier this week, week yeah a couple of days ago yeah this week but it's the latest and um and we are pretty happy with uh, with the way it's going because also all the demo is is, is a piece of cake yeah. and when when something really doesn't work you put this in a in a shared config and things will work in pyodide too so that's that's the current state of or at least FFI we provide in, in PyScript is just that. Two things, and hopefully you don't usually need those two things, but if you do use to, those two helpers, um, you should expect the right thing to happen. Yeah, Damien's been doing some really great work um, over the last couple of months with us, and the FFI is coming together. There's a bunch of async IO stuff, uh, which is... is is, is really great um bug squashing as well a whole bunch of really really great stuff so micropython is, is rocketing along and you know the pyodide folks we've been working with them with hood um as well as you saw uh i noticed you were like the first comment you know go hood uh when that uh, pull request was merged that, that will make things a lot easier um for for many many folks so this, this is how an open source community should work we work together and we support each other so that that's great um, an awesome work andrea as well um I, it just makes me smile every time how easy it is to make this stuff happen um the important thing for us is to reveal it to people so they can see how easy it is as well so um uh let's let's keep doing that so uh yeah go for it martin so the question now, obviously, is do we uh, write the invent builder, for example, in React or in PyReact or PyView? <laughs> I don't know. So it's too early it, to it's, it's a rhetorical it's question. question. <laughs> never, never, never too early. Let's do it. Right. I'm on it now. Here we go. <laughs> well, I'm about to take a week's holiday off, so I look forward to returning and having it all rewritten in React. Uh, it's... <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, right, the beauty of it is it means that all the stuff that, that we've been going through where we're talking about, okay, the model, part of the view model in terms of the patterns, mm. the architectural patterns, the view model is in JavaScript, the view model, some of it's in JavaScript, some of it's in Python. It's like yeah. no longer need that, right? You just, you literally, yeah. you can do it all at the Python level. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Yep. Lots of nice sweeties in the sweet shop, the PyScript sweet shop. And we need to let people know about it. That's the thing. Um, yeah. And we're dog fooding it as well, Martin, as you quite rightly said, we should be doing that. Um, talking of sweeties, Chris, um, see how I segued there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're a you're a bit of a sweetie, uh, and you have a demo for us. Um, and 
am I allowed to say where you did this demo? Uh, or are you just going to... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Chris uh, has had um, uh, a long-standing relationship with Lego. And Chris was in Denmark last week, last weekend. And we're about to see the demo that Chris did to Lego. So, uh, let's go. So, before we get too far on that, um, Andrea, I don't know how to use Discord. I can't find the link you sent anywhere. I've been on every single Discord uh, server that I can click on, and it doesn't show up. So, if you wouldn't mind just emailing it to me, or slacking it to me, or texting it to me, or any of the, like, 1980s technology, that would be awesome. I, I will fax it to you. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> All right, uh, so I will share my screen. Hopefully you guys see something other than yourselves. So we see just first ourselves. Thing. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 OK, we will uh, stop streaming. I presume I put push on the share your screen. Yeah. And then and then Entire see. screen. Yeah. And then low resolution, entire screen, community calls, go live. Try again. Okay. Now we see. Yeah. Okay. Now we see okay. a cute picture of your grandchildren, I'm assuming. So that, that's the first announcement for all you guys that came out. Oliver indeed has come home. Oh, bravo. Uh, so that, Excellent. For those of you who don't know, that's my uh, grandson who was born two months early. And... Uh, has dominated our lives. So, my talk in Lego uh, in March was this. If we go to uh, basically, uh, so Lego makes a little spike prime. We have this little web page. You can connect up to the serial port and connect up to spike prime, and you can say beep. And it beeps. I don't know if you can hear that. But you can see this is actually a terminal where I can type anything in and get anything back. So this is a full, I can do health modules if I want. And now, Andre, you see why I really want to have a terminal in here instead of my act terminal. Or I can take a bunch of code and I can send it to Spike like that. And it does the control mode. I think this is already good enough, but yes, I understand why you, why you make that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> But you'll notice there's this little thing up top here, which is an MQTT uh, topic, two topics, a listen topic and a, and a yelling topic that you can connect up to. So if we go back here and maybe look at Martin's page that he built while he was out here, I can send beep. And if you look at Spike Prime, if you heard it, it indeed beeped. The last topic that came through was on Le Lego Spike In, and it was beep. So anything from anywhere else in the world uh, can go ahead and make the brick beep. That's kind of cool. Um, the other kind of cool thing just for you guys that I didn't uh, show Lego is that what's behind all of this is actually very simple code uh, because everything is running off of um, other web pages. So I have a web page that's only MQTT. That's this one right here that we just did. And I have a web page that is only the, for the, all the serial communication. So this thing calls those libraries, and so you can debug by running those individual pages, which turns out to be very useful. Um, so there's no reason to just do Spike Prime. We can actually do take this and make a new page. And I can connect this up to an Arduino. And of course, I can change this from Spike to Arduino. I can call it whatever I want. And now I can connect up to an Arduino over serial. And of course, I didn't bring an Arduino, but you see it's all nicely connected. They'll talk back and forth. And so now suddenly an Arduino and, and a Lego robot are working together. Um, you can have an OpenMV camera, which is the one I demoed for Lego, then talking quite nicely over an MTTD channel uh, back and forth uh, to Spike Prime. You can also do um, an Adafruit dashboard, which is kind of fun. So if we open up an Adafruit dashboard, you can see I have the same little header thing uh, connected on the channel, only now I have a different topics for yelling and, uh, and hearing. And then if we copy this link and open it in Safari, 
you can see that I can change this word beep here by turning off the beep to quiet and back to beep and back to quiet. And wow, that's just really cool. And of course, you can go both ways and throw stuff up to a graph. So that's showing that you can do REST API as well on the same MQTE channel. So I hope what's sort of running through your minds is at this point is, what if Invent could actually tell me how to connect the channel from the Adafruit to the channel on Spike Prime? So that when I hit that button, without me actually having to edit any of these pages, I would be able to say sort of an if this, then that type, type world. Uh, if something comes in on uh, Lego 8 out, then push it directly to Spike Lego Spike in. Um, so that's where I see uh, some of the, the block language and so on being uh, quite useful. We also, just for kicks, did a Teachable Machines. Um, the Teachable Machines actually we did on the fly while we were there, and it was super easy. Um, and you can see if I smile. <laughs> no, sorry, only a 75% chance of smiling. But again, it'll push it out uh, on the MQTT channel. So that's sort of the overall idea. The thing, uh, and, and sorry, uh, Ted, I didn't get the camera stuff working yet on there because I wanted to use the new stuff that Andrea wrote that hides everything, um, and but, but sets up all the camera and the open CV. So that will happen sometime this week. Um, the only question I really have for you guys is it would be really handy if I didn't have to copy paste the code for the channel stuff into every one of these web pages. So every one of these web pages has exactly the same code um, that has to be moved to all these different spots. Uh, and the only way I could think of getting around that, and I'm um, open to other ideas, is to actually programmatically do all of the, um, uh, programmatically do all of the buttons and, and backgrounds and stuff. Okay, you know, that so topic I'd go on, but Andrea. Yeah, put yeah, your hands um, up. Uh, Andrea was first. Sorry. <laughs> okay, first of all, that was awesome. Um, I have you guys wrote most of it, so yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> one question and one sketchy answer. So the question is, is the channel publicly available or you still need to connect with your credentials to the, to the MQTT thing? I hope the second one, because otherwise it, it will be uh, chaotic to um, to share a single channel name entirely in the world. It feels like, okay, that, that what could possibly go wrong. So right now it is public. You can actually jump on right now if you have an MQTT thing and you can make my robot beep. If you do, come on, Martin, you can you do it. To sleep. You're planning to sleep anymore, right? <laughs> well, I send you it. But of course... Of course, you can make it private. Uh, hey, well done. Did it, Someone just did made it. a beep. It yeah, beeped. excellent. There you go. <laughs> yep, again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> All right. Now I get it. <laughs> so just, let, let, let me just... Let me just put that, I'll just put that in the loop for you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> One <Well>, um, beep. <laughs> okay, and the sketchy answer is... Uh, I think you you are fetching in the in the config Tomol or JSON, I don't remember. I think it was Tomol, but anyway, you are fetching those scripts remotely as a PyScript thing and put it in the file system. And I think what you're asking is any uh, like boilerplate in JavaScript. Uh, so the solution with the Py editor is to actually use a setup node that just fetch that file and evaluates it or run it or use import it or, or whatever. Or you can actually just use import. If I can see now when I when we exchange emails, I will send you the link to my demo. You will send me the link to your demo and, and, and I will have a look and, um, and try to find out what's the best way to go. Um, because the Py editor has this separate set of thing, but in PyScript in general, we should be able to simplify the boilerplate in, in a bootstrap way, friendly way. So I, I think if it's not possible yet, but I think it is, but if it's not possible yet, I'm not sure if others agree, but uh, I think we should make it possible because uh, 
it might be a common scenario where you have a lot of projects that just depend on that kind of boilerplate in in JS. The same way we depend on boilerplates in the in, in Python. So when I say boilerplate, I I mean modules most of the time. But a module can also be a setup process. So you can you can do things for you. So it should work. But I will happily have a look and answer. Okay. We'll see. I yeah. think next up was either Fabio or Martin. I'll let you find. My, my comment is really quick. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, my if, comment if is really quick. quick then and Fabio, I... go for it. Comment. Yeah, and actually, it's a handball to to Martin. Uh, so the the um, this topic of actually using apps as modules as well, and something that you can use as a dependency, is part of the vision and it's part of what we discussed several times. I, I in fact, I was going to ask you, Martin. I think we removed the course constraints about it in PSDC. But if not, we probably that's something that we will, will be discussing soon. So that basically you can point to an app and then yeah. use this as a model module. There, I so if you point to the files right now, it, if we remove the course, should just work. I think in general, in the future, what we want to do is some have a a module or something that you can just or or a, a plugin where you just do add. The, the channel, whatever it is, and then you, you just point to the app instead of the whole, uh, so, sort of a, like a registry. But anyway, that's the idea. Uh, Martin. Yeah. Yeah. The, the tricky part for me is the, because we want to be able to bundle JavaScript and Python, right? And HTML. Uh, yeah. And HTML. Yeah. It's like th this, this app contains these things. Like we want to build our own, I'm not going to use, yeah, like a wheel format, right? Package. But it's like, <laughs> a packet, yeah, but a, but a package that contains those three things, and if I can include that with one line in my in my app, I can just go, hey, import this packet, and then it does all the magic: JavaScript, Python, HTML, CSS, whatever it, whatever assets I need. Um, that would be that would be amazing. Then we then we've got a, basically our own. Oh, Martin. <laughs> oh. Denton, Texas has been attacked by Godzilla again. Clearly, oh no, Martin, Did I... you, 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 yeah, you stopped. Sorry, you want to just yeah, yeah, ask that so, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. All I was saying was it just it, like if we can do that, like that, it, it, like we're using we we can use PyScript.com as a, a low, really easy way of sharing without the headache of PyPI, which is going to be huge when we do. You know, if you want, if PyScript.com ends up on prem or things like that. Ted, oh, now this goes way back in my memory, but. I recall setting the course settings so that Fabio was the registry. <clears throat> Fabio's account. It has yeah. the course settings to do registry. I don't know if that's what I'd love. Apparently, people don't trust me, so someone removed I, it at some point. But I, I, I took that out, Ted. I don't know what I'm saying. It's like I think it was it was nearly three hours after you left. I took that out. I but, yeah. I gotta say, I just want to highlight when you said. We need to deal with Py, uh, Python, JavaScript, and HTML, the new favorite language of, of Ted. His smile just, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, we will consider HTML as a programming language, Ted. You're fine. No worries. Yeah. Cool. Everybody else doesn't think it's real. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they just abstract around it. It's quite powerful. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's even a standard. Mm. I I have a question for Chris. Um, what did Lego think? That I can't tell you when it's being recorded. Okay. <laughs> no, they liked it. Okay. Cool. Good. 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 Um, I thought you were going to say they thought it was awesome, but there we go. That's the terrible joke that Lego now have to <laughs> endure since that first movie. <laughs> Um, any more comments for Chris? Or Chris, any more comments for us? Um... Uh, just thanks for all the help. And I, I think I'm getting to the point with, with a lot of Andrea's help to sort of have it be the way that you would like the code to be written. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, think, I think there's something to ad not advertising that this is Python in a browser, but that this is actually... The Python in a browser doesn't necessarily look like Python that's not in a browser. So Python in a microprocessor is very different from Python in a browser. Yeah. Right. So if we really start thinking about writing a bunch of 
small nuggets that get run at various times. And so maybe that's your your uh, decorators or something like that. We use that as a differentiator. Um, all of my students do wild trues everywhere. Yeah. Without even thinking and without any weights and without any time, you know, time dot sleeps and all that kind of stuff. So how do we stop that habit uh, initially in the very beginning, I think would be yeah. wise. It's the, it's it the sounds like an environment issue. It, yeah, it's the difference in environments. Exactly. In the browser, it's all asynchronous. In normal Python, it's uh, it's a synchronous language, and uh, um, there is some adjustment. But Andrea has raised his hand. Uh, I was kind of teeing him up for saying something anyway, so he's taken the bait. Go for it, Andrea. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's kind of exactly the same in, in the JS world, which I'm more familiar and more, uh, have more history with. So the, 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 the browser did things that the backend Node.js and others these days didn't like and vice versa. And, uh, and now it looks like they are converging at least in a point where everything works. But then there are projects like the Espruino, um, which is a JavaScript runtime itself that builds and compiles to um, our, something like Arduino or MicroPython. So it works for controllers and there's so much so many patterns that are different, inevitably, because you you worry more about writing to the uh, standard I/O or, or the GPIO, sorry, to the GPIO and listening to events. So that's still the cool part, or that's probably the, the common thing that they have. But a lot of other patterns are kind of yagni. You you ain't gonna need it. So I I, I see both both things, not necessarily being um, discriminative or, or something like they are necessarily wrong in one word or in the other, but it's, it's true that you can't bring the entirety of the way. You, it makes no sense to have React in a microcontroller the way it is now. But it makes sense to maybe think about stuff that is reactivity, the reactivity on the, on the web that could be in the microcontroller so you don't have to think about adding all the events because right now it's all about add event to the channel blah 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 and that could be fully uh, inspired by the web approach and vice versa sometimes the web can say hey i just want to listen to the mqtt somewhere and when anything happens not just your thing beeps but my website updates you know so it's uh, i think it's a matter of uh, Connecting the dots in a in, in in the best possible ways, way and uh, abstractions unfortunately is uh, probably the best answer to that, and uh, we're trying <laughs> our best, I guess, to to bring that in. Ted, so wouldn't there be a way to understand the device or platform that you're on? I mean, the browser has a user agent that sort of it's kind of a mangled string of, to identify, but you can also feature detect in certain areas where you can tell if a function exists or a signature exists to be able to call it. And it would be nice to actually level some of these differences. So the differences between running on Spike Prime, running on uh, any kind of SB board, or running in the browser is sort of smoothed over in a way that it just simply detects and remaps. Um, so the boilerplate wouldn't need to be written. It would sort of be in the platform. Um, but it's yeah, sort of no, a configuration, a configuration environment, or a configuration-related issue. The, the user agent is spot on because when you connect to, if I remember correctly, when you connect by USB at least, or even Bluetooth, you have you have a lot of details, which is kind of the user agent version of 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 these devices. But branching out all all possibilities with all possible interpreters and all possible programming languages. Um, I'm not saying it's not doable, it's just very, very practical because there are so many differences and so many, many minutes. Even in the Raspberry Pi world, you have all these 40 layers, GPIO thing, pins that theoretically they are all the same, but you don't want to bring schematics in and think, okay, it's calling the, chip, the GPIO 30 and sending one while this other platform, this other board, SBC, has uh, uh, the 30 that points to the 28 and one should be two. So you don't want to deal with this kind of mess, I think. But but maybe- But I think, for, but I think the team, the teams- Yeah. 
Sorry. But I feel like the team's done a great job in leveling the differences between Python and MicroPython. What we're really talking about here is why don't you level the platform upon which 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 is known good as to where where you are environment wise. Um, if you think about it, we still have to normalize 100% PyoDad and MicroPython, and it's just two runtimes. So increase the amount of possible targets and the effort is going to be uh, exponentially increased yeah. too i think so um, that's the only that's the only issue probably time and uh, by the time somebody normalized everything all these platforms will be old <laughs> and uh, we need to add more platforms and so and it's it's like um house and cat game i don't know so but, but i agree as much as much as it's reasonable or things that are low hanging fruits probably should be in instantly without thinking. And then you can refine further if it's needed. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. It will be lovely if uh, everything was like, uh, yeah, you, you bring this in and all the APIs are, are fine. And uh, that, that's our humble effort with the, with the PyScript FFI. It's just two things, but at least hopefully those two things do the right thing. Um, but there's much more behind the PyDide FFI and what can MicroPython do and the fact that they transform things differently and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Cool. Well, um, is there anything else on anything else that we need to talk about? Because if not, uh, we've been going on for 45 minutes now. Um, so, and uh, I'm going on holiday as soon as this call finishes. <laughs> Me <So>. too. <laughs> So I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop the recording then.